Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Asim Razak, and I'm really excited to be presenting here at uh, Platform Con. In uh, this presentation, we'll be talking about how to get FinOps right without destroying agility. Unless you've been living in a cave, you've probably come across this term called FinOps, especially if you have uh, some significant workloads in a public cloud, uh, since in that scenario, you really have to make the economics uh, work out for you. So before we dive into the details, uh, a little bit about my background. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Euroscale, a company that uh, has a product for cloud cost management, and it is trusted by some of the best engineering teams in the world, including Hulu, Zoom, Okta, and Klarna. And prior to that, I was the head of platform engineering at PayPal and eBay, where my teams were responsible for all the core infrastructure that did logins or payments. Needless to say that it was uh, quite exciting and nerve wracking at the same time. And before that, I held uh, several positions uh, in terms of engineering leadership at early stage, mid stage, late stage startups, primarily focused on this uh, software infrastructure layer, also known as the internal development platform or platform. And uh, so that's, uh, that's sort of been uh, my bread and butter and what I've focused on throughout my career. So in platform engineering, we all know that we're responsible for making sure that the platform itself is reliable, performant, and secure. I mean, certainly those are key KPIs. And we're also making sure that the teams at the edges, application teams, services teams that we are enabling are also uh, are able to build their products reliably, uh, performant, and secure. But there is this fourth KPI that has entered into the equation when it especially comes to public cloud, which is a shift from uh, CapEx to OpEx. CapEx meaning you own the infrastructure, you don't have to worry about a monthly bill, and OpEx obviously is increasingly uh, subscription-based. And so cost is this new requirement. And whether you like it or not, you either have to deal with it now or you have to deal with it in the near future because that is where all of this stuff is headed. And so it really becomes about how do you start making the right trade-offs because the health of the business, the health of your company, the health of the, health of the organization uh, can be impacted quite significantly if this is not correctly reeled in. And so challenge that we see a lot of times uh, in this scenario is that FinOps and CICD slash developer productivity, they are poised for a face-off, right? So the, the key points here we'll go through from the top and we go clockwise here is that finance has become a very critical stakeholder because if you've got a public cloud bill that is significant, that team is trying to figure out where is the money going, who do they attribute it to, how do they think about profitability, how do they think about margins, and again, back to that financial, financial health of the company. And you know, usually because of lack of a framework and product and process, they're sifting through invoices, they're sifting through billing data and working with uh, old data and, and, and grokking and getting a sense of what's going on from that. Um, then it's about trade-offs, right? So the platform team has been focused on developer productivity and uh, just release velocity but there has to be this trade-off and alignment in making sure that the economic efficiency is key because not only can you, uh, not only do you have to deliver all the tools and capabilities for teams to build their software faster and the other three KPIs, but also more economically efficiently. And a lot of times dev teams and application teams, they don't think about cost upfront, but this ha there has to be this shift left where uh, there are ramifications as a result of the architecture that you're using that need to be uh, thought through. I mean, you've heard about security shifting left and some of the other things shifting left. I mean, this is not different when it comes to cloud cost economics that it has to start shifting left and upstream. You need to be thinking about the economic ramifications of your decisions. And then finally, uh, because of uh, lack of frameworks and information and process or education, the application teams, platform teams, and the finance teams, they have a lot of friction because they're all trying to do the right thing when it comes to their perspective and context, but uh, they just get pitched against each other because the platform team is pushing towards uh, focusing on developer productivity. The application team is trying to get their feature and set of features out fast, and the finance team is just pulling their hair out, trying to figure out why uh, everything is costing so much and that are we headed towards a 
a bankruptcy bankruptcy situation or not. And so in a lot of companies that have significant workloads in public cloud, uh, where it, it is increasingly becoming the second biggest line item after uh, payroll, there is this phenomenon called bill shock, right? Which is there comes a time where there's a month where you receive a bill which is significantly higher than the prior bill and you don't really see any fundamental change in the business or how you're operating, but you're scratching your head trying to figure out why is this thing 50%, 100%, 150% higher. And this leads to this thing called CSI crime scene investigation, which is where the finance team comes and asks a bunch of questions of platform engineering or application teams trying to figure out why did we spend so much money? What happened? Who's responsible? And then eventually through all of all the back and forth and spreadsheet sifting, you realize there is some team that ended up spending a ton more than I guess they were supposed to. Uh, and and that team then starts doing an investigation, realizing in some scenarios that they spun up a bunch of machines in um, anticipation for some increase in uh, user requests or load and that they forgot to spin them down when for a day or two or three maybe that load that load uh, basically stabilized. And so, you know, there's all this back and forth and you still have this information in the back view mirror. And then in the future, similar stuff happens because it's not easy to keep tabs on millions of uh, cloud resources that are moving around and on an ongoing basis, the manual process is constantly going to break down and not work. So the point here is that FinOps and engineering, they need a common language, they need a common framework. Uh, this, this new entrant needs to, needs, to, uh, needs to have something where there is that collaboration because engineering is speaking engineers, FinOps is speaking their own language around cogs and margins and profitability and things of that nature. And engineers kind of feel like, well, I, you know, how do I become a cloud cost economist in my spare time? So you have to have the right tools where that can analyze the data. You have to have transparency and you need to have those combined shared metrics, right? So things like, first of all, starting to understand where the money is going, right? Are we going to look at things at an application level, at a service level? What is the, what is the key metric for the organization that you focus on? So it might be the, the transaction uh, the cost of uh, number of transactions per second. It could be a number of uh, logins per second. I mean, whatever whatever KPI makes sense for your business, I think it's important to have that common KPI. And then you, you connect back all of the infrastructure application services back to that KPI and um, try to make sure that you are being efficient. Then you can allocate budgets. You can help teams forecast where the money is headed just so they can stay within those bounds and those guardrails. So I think those KPIs, th that notion of budgets and forecasting uh, and having that framework is very, very important. So there is there is that uh, environment of collaboration. And so building a culture of uh, cloud cost ownership is very important. Uh, as everybody knows that habits and culture are what really define um, the, uh, the success or failure of an organization. And so I um, usually refer to this book called Drive by Daniel Pink, in which he talks about this concept of intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation. Extrinsic motivation is something where, you know, there is um, something like you'll get, a, you'll get a salary increase or you'll get a bonus or you'll get a promotion if you do something, right? And uh, the thing is that extrinsic motivation can work to a certain level, but it cannot motivate people on an ongoing basis. So this intrinsic motivation is important. And the three key pillars of that are autonomy, purpose, and mastery, right? So if we apply this to FinOps or cloud cost economics, then autonomy would mean that you're enabling teams, right? So you're letting teams know and help them understand what their piece of the puzzle is, how much it's costing them to run a service or an application, and what is the budget that they should be focused on. And once that is set, it's up to the team how they make decisions and decide how they're going to keep it within within those parameters and within uh, within those guardrails. So nobody wants to be micromanaged. Nobody likes a stick. Nobody likes threats, right? And nobody likes like random uh, requests that don't make a ton of sense, right? So autonomy is important. The second one is purpose. And purpose is back to context, right? Why are we doing this? Why are we focused on cost, right? When we're saying, on the other hand, we have to deploy stuff fast and we got to migrate everything into cloud or... You know, the competitor is going to kill us if you don't do X, Y, Z in terms of capabilities. So the context here needs to be set. 
as we spoke about, I mean, there is a higher level KPI. It's the financial health of the business. What does that mean? That means that we're spending a ton of money in cloud. We're not making as much money in terms of our uh, revenue. So the profits are really low. You know, we might have to do layoffs down, down the road. And especially in this macroeconomic environment, uh, being very fiscally conservative and efficient is very important. So you got to set that context for those teams as to why the ask is there for them to be fiscally and financially efficient. And the third one is to motivate teams around uh, mastery, right? So skill is important. And the skill of not only being an engineer that builds software that scales in terms of performance and reliability and is secure, it also is a skill that is extremely valuable that you're able to run economically efficient software. It makes you a better engineer. It makes you more valuable to the company. It, uh, it increases your uh, ability to be more marketable, right? So I think those three ingredients uh, in your own context need to be there and you need to connect those uh, dots for your teams. And realize that cloud cost ownership is a journey. It's not a one and done, do it one time and then, then you're good to go, right? But it starts number one with visibility, right? You can't really improve anything that you can't measure. So understand what are you measuring what you know? What's your context, right? Are you again looking at things at an application level? Maybe they connect back to products. They connect back to business units, and I think within that you have to make sure you have a product or a framework that's helping you give that visibility on an ongoing basis. That it doesn't become a huge exercise every month to try to gain that visibility. And from there, flow number two and three, which is uh, how do you make sure that your costs are predictable? Because nobody likes surprises, right? You wanna you're trying to avoid surprises because the CFO office and the budget owners, I mean, they have all these models, right? And if if things are just haywire and then moving randomly, then it's very hard to keep to those models and then there are financial ramifications of that. So if you can help teams forecast where the money is going so they can take action ahead of time, they can respond to things instead of reacting to stuff that's happened in the past, that's key and critical. And then the final step is then you can have continuous optimization, right? Once you understand what's going on, once you understand what the larger picture is, then you can take steps uh, that can make those trade-offs around how do you run things more efficiently? How do you optimize things? How do you right-size uh, certain workloads? How do you schedule just so certain machines are not running uh, at night versus daytime? I think those are all decisions that one can make. And you have to build a culture of FinOps agility. I mean, I use that term very deliberately because a lot of times something like FinOps can be looked upon as you are going against agility. But if you really, like anything, have it embedded within the culture, you have the metrics, you have the products, you have the frameworks uh, that really allow you to have this and uh, be an embedded part of how you operate, then a lot of um, uh, great stuff can happen. So uh, again, you have to evangelize this. You have to make sure that people understand the importance of financial accountability, uh, just the way they understand the importance of accountability when it comes to security and reliability and performance. Uh, you have to understand how your larger team is really focused on FinOps. What does that mean to you? What are those metrics? And how do you get better at it over a period of time? You have to pay attention to these architectures that can be extremely expensive. So what are trade-offs you can make? And you have to always make trade-offs, right? In order to have a good decision, there's nothing in life that is one-dimensional. So you have to really, um, once you have all of this information and this data, to work with the stakeholders to say, look, we can run this at a lower cost, but here is the hit on performance. Are you okay with that, right? And uh, and in some scenarios, that might be a perfectly viable solution. In other scenarios, it might not be a viable solution. So you have to be strategic about it and then evangelize this, right? So uh, figure out who are the people who care about it the most and they can be evangelists of this fiscal responsibility and this fiscal efficiency because that's how you're going to build this culture and you have to build this through a place of inspiration not what i call a place of perspiration which is like just beat people down and say well you got to do this right so come from a place of inspiration how this helps people be better engineers it helps the the stock of the company for public company or it helps the general health financial health of the company you can be more competitive if you really really listen and are, and are really focused on it uh so you know, if you want to reach out to me, ask any questions, uh, you can you can do that on alwaysengineer.org. I have a podcast uh, with the same name. And in fact, I did a great podcast with uh, Luca Galante, who runs uh, the community here at Platform Engineering. So do check that out. There are other podcasts 
uh, there as well. And I, I really look forward to hearing from you and uh, getting your feedback. Thank you for listening. I appreciate your time.